Hey guys, Carl Sorensen, SitesForContractors.com. In this video, I'm gonna give you three tips to get your landscaping website ready for spring. So the first tip is make sure that you have pages for the individual services that you offer. Most landscapers will create a website, they'll create a services page, and they'll try and list everything they do on that one page. That doesn't work. If you wanna get found in Google and you wanna create messaging that's gonna resonate with potential clients, you need to create individual pages for each service that you offer. So if you get into hardscaping, that can be broken down. You have a retaining wall page, a paver patio page, a paver driveway page, a fire pit page, etc. The list goes on. If you get into softscape installations, so let's say you do sod installations, garden bed installations, you plant trees, and shrubs those are all individual pages again by breaking up your content in this way you're creating new opportunities for you to get found you're also able to create messaging that better resonates with those potential clients so if you're looking at your website right now and you have a single services page and you're trying to list everything that you do on that one page that's a big mistake and you need to fix it if you want to get results from your website this spring so the second tip is you want to make sure you get all of your updated photos on the site. So we're looking for two specific kinds of photos when we want to get results from our lawn care or landscaping website. The first type of photo that I like to see are branded photos. So if you have trucks or trailers with your wraps or decals on them, or you have staff that have company shirts or company hats on, you want to include that branding in as many photos as you can. It just gives the website a much cleaner, more professional look, and it will help attract those higher quality clients that are looking to hire a company that isn't some fly-by-nighter. The second type of picture we're looking for are really good before and after shots. Customers don't want to see in-progress photos or the mess that you've left in somebody's yard while you're building their beautiful landscape. What they want to see is what the landscape looked before versus what it looked like after you were finished. Those good before and after pictures will do more to sell your work than anything else that you can put on your website, bar none. If you're not making a habit of taking good before and after pictures now, make an effort to do so this spring as you start to get busier and you're getting jobs under your belt. Take good quality before and after photos. Hire a professional photographer if you have to. Make sure if you're doing it yourself, take the pictures in landscape mode and not horizontal mode. So hold the phone sideways and not straight up and down. The pictures will be a lot more usable. Just another quick tip related to photos, uh, instead of having a photo gallery on your page, which I would classify as a bit of a mistake, you want to take and organize the photos based on their specific service. Much like how we talked about having specific pages for each service, you want to make sure that on those pages you have pictures of said service. So if you have a retaining wall page, all of your photos or retaining walls go on that page. If you have a mulch installation page, all of your mulch installation pictures go on that specific page. Now we're creating a page that's more relevant to a specific searcher and they don't have to dig around your website looking at photos of stuff they may or may not be interested in. They have all the information they need to make a decision right there on that one page. The third tip, and this one's a little bit more technical, you might have to have somebody look at the site for you, but you want to make sure that your meta title and meta description tags are done properly. So your meta title and description are what shows up in search results when somebody is doing a local search for a business. So if somebody searches for uh, a, a landscaping company or a retaining wall company or a new lawn installation, that type of thing, your meta title and meta description tag are going to show in those search results. The most common mistake I see on landscapers websites, and there's a lot of you in this group, I've seen your sites and you're making the same mistake, is your title tag will just say home or it will have the business name. Neither of these are relevant to a searcher. We wanna make sure that we have the service that we provide and the geographic area that we provide it in. So if you're a landscaping company in XYZ City, we wanna make sure our title tag says landscaping company XYZ City. And on the specific service pages that you offer, this also applies. You wanna have a meta title tag that is descriptive of that service and of the geographic area you provide it in. So if you build retaining walls in XYZ City, your title tag should say retaining wall builder XYZ City. Now you're giving Google much more relevant information about your page and it helps them categorize it and it's actually a ranking factor, a really important ranking factor as well. The meta description tag is the description that shows up in a search result listing of that particular page. So you have two choices. You can either do it yourself and provide Google with the information so that they have a relevant description tag to display, or you can let Google display a relevant description tag based on their information of your site, and it may or may not always make sense. So it's always a good idea to have a custom meta description tags written for each specific service that you offer. This way you can categorize the service, the geographic area you provided in, and you can also include some calls to action within that description, such as a phone number, call now, or visit our website to learn more. Now you can check your meta title or description tag 
two ways. You can either go to your website, right click on the browser bar, uh, on the tab, sorry, and click view source, and there'll be a meta title and meta description snippet of code somewhere near the top so you can see exactly what they say. Or you can just open your page up in a browser and then hover your mouse button over top of the tab in the browser and that will show you your title tag. The description tag you'll have to look in the code for or you can actually go to search results and search a specific page on your website and see what Google is displaying for your meta description tag. So that's it. Those are the three tips to get your website ready for spring. If you have any questions, you have any concerns, let me know. Send me a message. I'm happy to help and uh, have a good day guys. Thank you.